in order to become a proficient painter, you have to do lots of paintings. There's no getting around it. You can't just do a painting now and then and get good at it. You have to do it over and over again. You have to do lots of paintings. But what do you do when your the numbers of canvases you have start stacking up to the ceiling? Believe me, we've all there, we all know what that's like. They don't all sell. Maybe you're not ready to sell. You're painting on canvases. It gets really it really gets to be problematic. Well, one of the things that I like to do is to paint on paper. This is about 75 paper paintings. You can imagine if this were 75 canvases how much more room it would take up. I have talked about this before in other videos but I wanted to zero in on it a little more today. This stack represents about 75 paintings. Now they're not all finished. Some of them are finished. Some of them are just testing, partially done. I may go back to them later and do something to them but they make nice um, color studies. One of my favorite things to do is a swipe. Here's an example. I was working out some colors. This is a swipe. And I'm not going to go through every painting here, but I just want to show you a few things. This was a really neat swipe. And I use negative painting to create this horse. I love negative painting. Here's another swipe that I turned into a buffalo. Buffalo is another one of my favorite subjects. Here's another buffalo swipe. You can see I like doing swipe. Here's another swipe. It turned out to be one of my favorites. And I've not been able to replicate it. I really like it. I can't tell you why. I just like what happened here. So that is an example of some of the 75 paintings I have in this stack. Future ideas, color combinations, you name it. And what I'm going to do is, uh, the other day somebody asked me, how do I paint on paper? Do I tape the paper down? Do I mount it on something? So I want to show you just very, very quickly how I paint on paper. I'm going to do a swipe, and I do not tape it down. I just hold it. And one of the, again, one of the reasons I cover my table with plastic is it becomes one big workspace. I don't use paper, I don't use, you know, I don't use newspaper. I cover my table with plastic sheeting. So here I have a, this is a Strathmore watercolor paper. This is the type of paper that I use the most. It's very affordable. That's probably why I use it the most. But I also have some other types of paper on my Amazon shopping list. And I always keep it updated with my favorites. So what I'm going to do today is just very quickly show you a swipe on paper. So here we go. Black is going to be my swipe color. I just have some colors picked out in advance. Pouring straight out of the bottle. What I'm using today is my very own Happy Medium Paint Ready to Pour. It's ready to pour straight out of the bottle. You can go to happymedium.fun if you want to check it out. If you're tired of mixing and measuring and all the guesswork, I have it all figured out for you. I like to use white in my swipes. It always makes for an interesting color transitions. Throw some red in here just to make this a little different. And again, when you're when you're pouring on paper, it's there's no pressure because it's just it's just an inexpensive piece of paper. You can practice, you can try things out. Okay, so there's my stripes and there's my black, and I'm going to swipe it. And if you haven't done much swiping, th this is a good way to practice. Some people talk about not having a a feel for how Hard to swipe. I'm using my offset spatula, which is my favorite swiping tool. It's on my Amazon shopping list too. I have a small one. This is the small one, and I also have a bigger one. This is coming out really cool. I'm going beyond the edges of the paper. So you get to a point where you can't really even see where the paper is but that's okay 
there is a really easy swipe. Okay, before we go on, I want to talk about these cells. When you do a swipe, the biggest cells are usually at the top. And then as it gets drugged further down, they tend to become smaller. But it's a really nice, interesting transition. And swiping is the best way to get cells, especially this in this pattern. And there's a lot of a fallacy about getting large cells. And I feel like the more you mess with your painting, whether it's tilting or swiping, the cells are going to get smaller. So if you swipe once, those are going to be the biggest cells. You can see there's a nice variety here. These are pretty good size, and then they get smaller. If you want cells, practice the swipe. Okay, now here's what I do with paper now after I'm done swiping. That's all I'm going to do to it. I'm going to, I'm going to pick it up, and I'm going to set it down in a dry spot. Now the paint will run off a little bit more as it dries. That's no problem. I have some leftover paint here. You can see where it was. And here's another thing that I like to do. I'm going to find a piece that I don't care too much about. Okay, this one is a swipe I did. It's, it's okay. But what I like to do sometimes is take something like this that I don't really care about and see if I can improve it or at least add something to it. So I'm going to take this nice overflow right here and I'm going to dip. Um, I'm going to look at my painting first. I don't think this is very pretty. I think this is pretty nice. This not so much. So this is where I'm going to dip this into. Press it down. And then it just becomes something else. And I may do that multiple times on any of these uh, paper paintings that I have uh, setting setting aside. So you can see uh, all these paintings are a work in progress. Some of them I don't want to touch, like for example my favorite swipe that I just showed you. I'm not going to touch that. This one, eh. So I think that's pretty cool. I can do some more dipping here, but I'm going to stop right here. I could actually do another painting if I wanted. If you want to clean this off and give yourself a place for your next paper painting. You can keep going as long as you have table space and then add it to your stack. Add it to its, its practice. It's um, improving on your skills, your color combinations. You can keep these as references for bigger paintings. That's what I do. Practice, practice, practice. I have a number of videos about pouring on paper. In fact, I have a whole playlist that you can look for down below. And one of them is about flattening out your paper if it buckles because more than likely your watercolor paper is going to buckle a little bit as it dries. This is no big deal. You can flatten it out. I have a video about how to flatten your paper after it's dry. And invariably you're going to get some paintings that you just love like this one is my one of my particular favorites. If you have something finished and you really love it, I have a video about how to mount this onto a canvas. I'm not real big on frames. I like mounting on canvas and this is something that I learned from Bob Burridge who was a great artist. He does this. He taught me how to do this many years ago. Please check out the video about mounting paper on canvas. So anyway, um, I hope this gives you some idea of what kind of uh, things you can do on paper. And again, I have the different papers that I've tried that work really well with pouring on my Amazon shopping list. And it's in the link below. And also, if you want to check out my Happy Medium paint ready to pour, it's at happymedium.fun. I hope you'll give it a try. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And, and hit that bell so you get notifications on new videos when they come out. And if you would like to support my channel, I have a PayPal link. I have a Patreon page. We also have merchandise at paintpouringpeople.com. And you might want to consider joining my Facebook group called Paint Pouring People. We have a lot of fun over there. You can post pictures of what you've done. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. And happy pouring. Remember, there's no rules.